Hi guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. In this video, we are going to discuss two programs related to Java. The first program will be we have to identify or find highest paid employees from each department. And second program will be a practical use case of sequential stream and parallel stream, where we are going to show how practically sequential stream is going to differ or behave differently from parallel stream. So let's start with the first program. So I have provided you a list of employees. Can you copy it? Yeah. Okay. So I have provided a list of employees and you have to identify or find the highest paid employees from each department. So we will go slow by uh, slowly and step by step. So first thing, can you identify employees or group the employees by the department? Yes. So um, I'll create an employee class before this. So let me create uh, an employee class. Okay. And uh, this class is going to have three fields. Uh, one is going to be your name. Okay. And the second field is uh, going to be your uh, department, which is actually your uh, CS or your IT. And third thing is going to be your uh, salary. And I'm going to create a constructor, both parameterized constructor and uh, default constructor. So let me create the parameterized constructor. I'm also going to create a default constructor for this. A default constructor is without any um, parameters. So these are the two constructors. After that, I'm going to create a getters and setters for all the, all the fields. So these are the getters and setters. And finally, I'm going to create a two string method. Oh, the requirement is to print the employee. So two string will help us printing an employee. Now uh, let's go to our uh, program statement. Now you want to print uh, the employees or group the employees based on their uh, department, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So I have taken uh, this input where I have four employees, uh, two belong to CS, computer science, and two belong to IT, information technology. And uh, I want to group using department. So there will be two employees in CS, employee one and employee two, and two will be in IT, employee three and employee four. So let's try to uh, solve this problem. I'm going to use a uh, stream because we want to use uh, Java 8. And after that, I am going to use uh, collect method. Uh, generally, for grouping, we use uh, collect method. So let's try to uh, group by. There is a specific method for uh, group by, which is uh, grouping by. So grouping by takes the field by which you want to group. So in our case, it is uh, the department. So I'm going to use e dot get department. Okay, so this will give me uh, the employees in each department and the uh, return type will be uh, a map. So this map will have, this map, this map will have the department name and uh, uh, the list of employees. So it is going to be map of string because our, our department is string and it is going to have a list of employees because we have two employees per department. So I'm going to or make this as by department okay so okay. this can this, you print it yeah i'll print it so this will give me uh, the grouping of employee by uh, department so let me print this by department i'm going to run this program so let's see what output it prints so it prints cs and there are two employees uh, employee one and employee two and for it there are two employees, employee three and employee four. So we have successfully grouped no. by the employees. Okay, fine, perfect. Now you have to identify the highest paid employee from each department. So from CS department, you should get the highest paid employee, which is having a CTC, I guess it is 15,000, right? And from IT department, you have to identify employee, which is having highest paid salary, which is 25,000. Can you do it? Okay, so I'll try to uh, do that. Now we have to find the highest paid employee. Uh, right. For that, I'm going to use a construct known as max by. So we are going to use a max by and try to find the highest paid employee. So let's try to, I'm going to use a construct known as uh, collecting and then. So we have to do one more operation of uh, collecting and then. So this operation basically 
just collecting. Uh, so here we are going to uh, give the condition, which is our actual condition of, of finding the maximum salary. So let me try to do that. So there is a method known as max buy. So as we want to find uh, the maximum salary, so the parameter to this method is going to be a salary, but we want to compare the salary within the department. So we have to use a comparator for comparing the salary. So let's try to uh, do that. Uh, comparator dot, there is a method known as compare int. And to this method, I'm going to pass uh, the salary. So it is going to be E dot get salary. So this will uh, do the actual comparison, uh, comparator dot comparant. And the next uh, parameter that we have is the return type of this uh, method, which is going to be your employee. Okay, so it returns optional. So optional is when you can either get the result from the department or you might not have uh, the result. So in that case, we use optional and then we are going to use uh, get. Okay, so let me see if I have missed anything. Okay, so here is grouping by, here is collectors. Okay, uh, all right. All right, so the return type is different. In our case, it is going to be uh, one employee because we are trying to find the max highest paid employee, okay? So this is going to return only one employee from each department. So let me uh, just quickly go through the logic. Mm, we tried uh, grouping by uh, using our department, which is CS and IT. And after grouping by, uh, we tried to find uh, the employee with maximum salary. So to find maximum salary, there, is, there are two methods, uh, which is collecting and then and then max by. So let's try to run this program and we expect uh, two employees, uh, one from CS uh, and the salary should be 15,000 and one from IT and the salary should be 25,000. So let's try to run this program. Uh, as you can see from CS, we got 15,000 and from IT, we got 25,000. Yeah, so that brings okay, the result. perfect, fine. So let's move to the next question. Okay. Okay. So can you tell me a few differences between sequential stream and parallel stream? Yes. So sequential stream generally runs on uh, one core and in one thread, and parallel stream uh, runs on multiple cores and in multiple threads. So this is the first difference. The second difference is uh, in sequential stream, the output is predictable and in parallel stream, the output is not predictable. So these are the two major differences in sequential and parallel stream. Okay, can you take a list of numbers and try to show me practically how sequential stream is different from parallel stream? Okay, so I'm going to take a list of integer and I'm going to print them uh, to practically show you how, how both the streams work. So I'm going to use arrays dot um, as list, and we are going to have four numbers, one, two, three, and four. And first we are going to use sequential stream and try to print these numbers using for each. So when you get stream out of your numbers, or by default, it's a sequential stream. So whenever you want sequential stream, you don't have to specify the nature of the stream. And I'm going to use uh, for each. And for each number, I'm going to uh, print the number. So to do that, I'm going to uh, do sysout. So let me do sysout. And while printing, I'm going to print the number. And after the number, I'm going to uh, print the name of thread in which uh, this stream is actually uh, running. So thread dot uh, current thread dot get name. Okay, so let me try to run this program. So when I run this program, you can see it's only the main thread which is running this stream and the output is predictable, which is sequential one, two, three, and four as it is in the list. So okay. this is our sequential stream. Okay, now this is, okay. Yeah. Now can you try to do it with the parallel stream? Okay, so uh, to get the parallel stream, you have to write uh, PRL parallel uh, stream. So this is a method to get the parallel stream. 
and uh, the behavior of parallel stream is such that um, it runs on multiple threads and the output is not predictable so we might not get one two three four it might be something else so let's try to run this program uh, when i ran the program it is three two one four uh, there is no predictability in the output and it ran in uh, three threads main worker one and worker two so i'll run this one more time just to show you that the output is uh, not predictable let's try to run this uh, you can see three four two one so the output is not predictable okay perfect fine thank yeah. you that's it from this video yes bye thank you bye bye